today I'm going to talk about a game that I've been waiting for from Kickstarter for a long time, although it's not late, it's just a project that was really well done, The Reckoners, based on the novel series by Brandon Sanderson. It's a great trilogy about normal people fighting supervillains. Um, it comes in this giant box, it's a one to six player cooperative game. I played it twice back to back on my game night on Wednesday. We played a six player game and lost horribly, and we played a four player game and knew what we were doing a little bit better and almost won. We were very, very close. I like that feeling of almost winning. Um, or winning. Winning is good too. But in this game, I have a couple different mechanisms that I want to talk about today. The first that I've heard the guys on the co-op cast talk about a lot, it's a great cooperative game podcast, is the idea of simultaneous play. In The Reckoners, all players, there's a certain phase of the game where you're rolling dice. I'm going to talk about more about that in a second. But once you have all your dice rolled and you know what you're getting that round, each player has six of these dice usually on average, um, you simultaneously decide how you want to use those dice. So I might say, okay, guys, I can take care of this, this uh, villain over here, and then I have two dice left over to help out somebody else. Or I might say, everybody, I, I need some help over here. And this is all happening in real time as you're discussing with the other players. It really feels like you are collaborating with the other players, which I love in a cooperative game. There's also always the issue of quarterbacking in a cooperative game, and it could still be an issue here, but the simultaneous play aspect really diminishes that. Because really, at any time, because I don't have a turn, I'm I'm not waiting for anyone else. Really, there's a lot less downtime because of the simultaneous play. Because I don't have a turn at any time, I can just say, okay, I want to use my dice for this. No one can stop me. I can just do it. And because there's so much to pay attention to, oftentimes that needs to be done. You can't go player by player and say, okay, this is exactly what we need to do. But you do need to cooperate, collaborate and cooperate to a certain extent if you're going to even have a chance at winning. I really, really like that simultaneous play. Back to the dice. So you start out the game with six of these normal dice and three, oh no, three of these normal dice and three color dice depending on your character. When you roll the dice each round, you roll all six or however many dice you have, and then you must keep one of them even though you get to re-roll up to two times. I really, really like that decision or that, that requirement, that limitation that you must keep at least one of those dice because it makes you, it forces you to make a decision right then and there and th instead of just saying, okay, I'll just roll them all, I'll, I'll try to get something else. Um, and often, even though this might seem a little punishing because you may not roll what you want, it actually, I really like that I have that decision every time I roll to take something, to, to power up, and it gives me a little bit of a path to follow as I continue to re-roll my dice. I really, really like that mechanism that you must keep at least one die every time you roll the dice. Um, the last thing I want to mention is related to... Uh, the, the, the epics themselves. And this is a nice little thematic touch because in this world, you uh, like in the story of this world, you have all these supervillains and they all have a weakness, but you don't know what they are. And so a big thing that happens in the books is that the good guys are trying to find out what the epic's weaknesses are so they can take them down. So this game incorporates this in a really nice way that's both cool thematically and mechanically. Basically, each villain has two tracks. Let me get a different card for this. I'll use shrapnel here. So each villain has two tracks that you have to pay attention to. There is uh, the research track and there's the health track down here. When this villain comes into play, or this epic as they're called, uh, he comes into play with four research. So it takes you have to spend four to get him down to zero to really know um, how to how to take him down. Or um, and he comes into play with six health. So during the round, you're kind of, or each round, you're kind of focusing on, okay, do I want to just focus on the health and take him down to six health, or am I rolling a lot of research? Do I want to focus a little bit more on research? And if you do that, if you decrease his, uh, this research path to zero, right away, see that little number there? Right away, his health decreases automatically to two. Um, so these numbers always kind of line up. See so, you how know, that's four, six minus four is two. They always line up, but it gives you the choice here to focus on research versus health, depending on what your role, depending on what you're good at. It adds a little bit more diversity to the game. So I like that there's two ways to really take down every epic in this game. It gives you some really interesting choices. There's a lot more I could say about this game. I really, really enjoyed it. It is, it, it fits into the category of what I would say of a punishing um, cooperative game because bad stuff is just constantly happening happening to you in a number of ways. There's there's a lot of like all these like 
you have citizens dying you're the big bad guy steelheart is getting stronger in a variety of ways you have more henchmen coming out you have these barricades coming out there's all this bad stuff happening but you still do feel pretty powerful in the game because you have these big wonderful dice that you can use constantly you have that feeling of cooperation as you're collaborating with other players and uh, you can buy more cards to uh, to improve your abilities adds up to to what i found to be a really pleasurable cooperative experience i can't wait to play again that's the reckoners i'd love to hear your thoughts if you have a favorite mechanism in the reckoners or if any of these mechanisms the idea of simultaneous play the idea of re-rolling but being required to keep at least one die or the balance of research versus health on the villains if you have any if that reminds you of any other games that you'd like to mention in the comments i'd love to hear about that as well all right thanks i'll see you on sunday for the sunday sit down